It's a scorching summer day in the small town of Ely, Manitoba in Canada, and a tornado has just descended from the sky to the northwest of town. The twister slowly meanders towards town at a snail's pace. Though appearing as a rather narrow and unimpressive tornado, at its core it's capable of producing catastrophic damage. As the tornado approaches the outskirts of town, it produces one of the most unique tornado tracks of all time, changing directions numerous times and doing a handful of loops. As the tornado begins its rope out stage, it enters the southwest edge of town with incredibly violent force and produces catastrophic damage to four separate houses. Damage afterwards reveals a slab foundation at one of the house locations, indicating that this tornado may have been at F5 intensity. Damage analysis are skeptical however though, because of this tornado's extremely slow forward speed, it may have led to increased damage at this area. The surveyors then receive a video of the tornado taken by a local that changes everything. It's June 22, 2007, in the small town of Ely, Manitoba. Ely is an extremely small town with less than 1,000 residents located about 20 miles west of Winnipeg. The weather on June 22 is just about as unbearable as it gets. Temperatures have rose well into the 90s with dew points into the 70s. Upwards in the atmosphere, a moderately strong jet stream and low pressure system approached the area from Saskatchewan throughout the day. A warm front was situated just north of town, allowing for the incredibly uncomfortable air to filter in. The accompanying cold front was located just to the west of town by Lake Manitoba and extending into Saskatchewan. To make the situation even more interesting, there is a lake breeze boundary that is present south of Lake Manitoba. There is also strong wind shear in place which causes thunderstorms to spin, meaning that pretty much all the elements are in place for a severe weather event. There is one possible hindering factor though in the form of a cap that is in place. A cap is a level of dry air a few thousand feet up in the atmosphere that can inhibit thunderstorms from forming altogether. However, if there's enough lift or say an extra boundary or something located nearby, it could act as a focal point for storms to form later. The aforementioned Lake Breeze boundary that was located just to the west of Ellie would do exactly that, and thunderstorms would begin forming on it in the mid to late afternoon. Storms began to form in the region just after 5 o'clock local time along the cold front with help from the Lake Breeze. At 5.40 p.m., two separate supercells developed to the northwest of Ellie and moved southeast towards town. A third supercell formed about 40 minutes later to the southwest of the other two storms. All the storms were now moving southeast at the incredibly slow speed of 10 miles per hour. The three separate supercells would soon thereafter begin to interact with each other and merge, which would begin and aid in tornado genesis. At 6.25 p.m., the tornado first touched down just to the north of the Trans-Canada Highway. The tornado initially moved southeast, but soon thereafter began its wildly erratic track and passed over the highway. As the tornado passed over the highway, it would pick up and toss a semi-truck and tractor trailer, leaving the driver shaken but unharmed. After initially moving southeast, the tornado turned sharply to the east, then south, and then the east again, all within the span of one mile. The tornado then made another sharp turn to the south, impacting the town's flour mill, and then did a very slow 360 degree loop back over the mill. While impacting the flour mill, the tornado was at F2 strength and caused upwards of $1 million in damages. At the mill, multiple semi-trucks were overturned and the mill's walls were blown inwards. Also at this point, the tornado began to expand its width slightly to 55 yards. After doing its loop, the tornado continued moving south, parallel to Jansen Road. Also at this time, the tornado weakened slightly to F0 intensity, but also expanded its width to 155 yards. After reaching the intersection of Jansen Road and Road 61 North, the tornado made another abrupt turn to the east and headed directly towards the southwest edge of Ely. Unfortunately, the tornado would not deviate its track again before hitting the southwest edge of town with ferocious intensity. While approaching town, the tornado rapidly strengthened and was now at F4 intensity or higher. The tornado then slowly impacted the four most southwest houses in the town of Ely, before beginning to do another 360 degree loop after passing over. As the tornado was completing its loop, it passed over the same impacted houses again, inflicting a second potent hit to the same area. The tornado did tremendous damage to these four homes, 
including one which was described as well-built and bolted to the foundation. The house was lifted completely off of the foundation, thrown into the air, and then broke apart. The tornado was even strong enough to rip some sill plates and snap off bolts that supported them. Trees were also debarked here and multiple cars were thrown lengths of distances. One car was tossed over 100 meters away and another was tossed onto a neighbor's roof. The tornado lingered over this portion of Ellie for roughly four minutes before it moved south and exited town. The tornado initially traveled south out of town before doing another 360 degree loop and then making one last unpredictable turn to the southwest and then soon dissipating. The tornado was on the ground for roughly 35 minutes but only tracked for 3.7 miles and at its max width was roughly 150 yards. The tornado had one of the wildest tracks of all time going almost every direction at some point during its life and performing three separate 360 degree loops. Remarkably, nobody was killed or even injured as a result of this tornado. Many folks in Ellie were not in town when the tornado hit, and the ones that were were well prepared for this situation, hence why nobody was injured or killed. The following day, Environment Canada sent out a storm damage survey team from the Prairie and Arctic Storm Prediction Center to assess the damage caused by the tornado. Earlier that same year, the United States implemented the Enhanced Fujita Scale, which was a new and improved version of the original Fujita Scale. Canada, however, would not adopt this new scale until 2013, so this tornado would be rated using the original Fujita scale. The team found the first instance of damage that could be rated was at the location of the town's flour mill. At this location, the team found evidence of F2 damage. Further on, the team found that the tornado weakened to F0 intensity before entering town. With the four affected buildings in town, surveyors found at least F4 damage with one house that was swept away completely with only the foundation remaining. Surveyors noted at the time that this could be F5 damage, but they were concerned with the extreme slow speed of the tornado. This would allow the tornado to produce much more and worse damage than if it were moving at a normal speed. Even though the damage at this one location supported F5 intensity, Surveyors were convinced that this was because of the extreme slow forward speed of the tornado, so they issued an F4 rating. The initial F4 rating would last a few months until September of 2007. During that month, the Weather Service received notice of a video that was taken by a local that documented the tornado destroying the four southwest homes in the corner of Ellie. After viewing the video, the Weather Service noticed something and came to a shocking conclusion. In the short video, you can see the tornado pick up, throw, and rip apart a full house in the air. This was all done in the span of just a few seconds, proving that the extreme damage to the houses was not done slowly over the span of a few minutes because of the slow forward speed of the tornado. After seeing this video, the weather service determined that there was now enough evidence to upgrade this tornado to F5 and the upgrade was done formally on September 18, 2007. Afterwards, the survey team even mentioned that the damage done at this location would have qualified for EF5 intensity had Canada been using the EF scale at the time, showing how truly powerful this tornado was. The Ellie Manitoba tornado was unique in many facets, including its look visually, how fast it was moving, and the bizarre path that it took. When you envision what a F5 or EF5 tornado looks like, you expect a huge tornado that makes you cringe with fear, which is certainly not what the Ellie tornado looked like with a max width of only about 150 yards. Another typical characteristic of strong tornadoes is that they're relatively fast moving, which once again the Ellie tornado does not fit into that category as it had a top speed of only 10 miles per hour. Finally, the path that this tornado took was one of the least predictable and most bizarre that any tornado has ever taken, with the tornado doing three separate loops and traveling in almost every cardinal direction at some point in its life. All of these very unique features make the Ellie Manitoba Tornado 2007 one of the most unique and interesting tornadoes of all time. And that's going to wrap it up for this video. I hope you guys learned something and thank you so much for watching.